Did you know that Academy City, the main setting of both a certain magical index and a certain scientific railgun, has a disturbing real-life inspiration, where members of a cult on the island of Sicily, located off the coast of Italy, got involved in hardcore drugs and obscene rituals, which actually influenced what would become the espers or psychic ability users of the Toaru franchise. But what is the story behind this bizarre, magic-obsessed cult, and how did it lead to the core concepts behind one of Japan's best-selling light novels? Let's start from the beginning. As I stated in my best power system video, Kamachi Kazuma, the author of Index, did a crap ton of research into real-life magic including the notorious British occultist Alistair Crowley, who the character of Alistair in Index is based on. The real-life one was known to be the ultimate anti-establishment figure during his life, as he pretty much devoted his entire life to committing as many taboos and controversies as possible during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, a time when England was still very religious and socially conservative. So you can imagine, the English establishment of the time didn't react very well when he was openly bisexual, participating in demonic magic rituals involving drugs, and calling him the Beast 666 or the Devil from the Book of Revelations, just to annoy Christians. Alistair's trolling truly knew no bounds. He also created his own religious ideology known as Philema, and the core philosophy of this religion was, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Which acted as the excuse for Alistair to ignore all potential consequences of his actions in pursuit of following his own true will, or greater purpose in life. Alistair was also a member of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, a secret magic society of eccentric middle and upper class individuals who relieved their boredom via magic rituals. But magic doesn't exist, even pulling a rabbit out of a hat is fake. Ah, but magic is real, Aeon. If you take an unquantifiable amount of heroin and LSD, that is, anything is possible. These magical rituals of the Golden Dawn helped inspire the magicians of the Toaru franchise, as Kamachi wanted the magic, which featured an index, to feel like it had rules and logic to it, much like how the Golden Dawn magicians had their own set of rules for magical practice. Continuing on, Alistair was a complete degenerate in the Golden Dawn, as one would expect, because he was absolutely insane. Introducing something called sex magic, which involved baking semen cookies and drug-fueled orgies. And no, I'm not joking. I really wish I was though. As a result of this and other factors involving Alistair being a mildly unpopular figure amongst key players in the Golden Dawn, such as the famous Irish poet W.B. Yeats, Alistair was kicked out of the Golden Dawn, and after working as a spy and travelling the world for years, he decided to take his loyal followers to Sicily, where they could live their ideal hedonistic lives at a new philemic temple, spent not in laws, statutes or rules, but according to their own free will and pleasure. If you thought the Golden Dawn stuff was bad, you ain't ready for this. And that's a warning for those of you who get disturbed easily. Alistair and his lover at the time, Leah Hersig, rented out what would become the Abbey of Philema from 1920 to 1923. The followers or students of Alistair even brought their own children to the Abbey to become part of the cult. Except this was no family-friendly summer camp. Alistair and his followers took psychedelic drugs during their rituals, and would often do so in Alistair's bedroom, known as the Room of Nightmares, which had horrific and disturbing paintings enveloping the room, including hermaphroditic goblins. Sounds like a job for this guy. This was all while they were following the teachings of Alistair in order to achieve their true will as Thelemites. They also engaged in orgies and even bestiality, which the unfortunate children at the Abbey sometimes witnessed firsthand. There wasn't just one room of nightmares, the entire Abbey was a nightmare! Jesus Christ! One of Alistair's pupils, Raoul Loveday, supposedly even drunk the blood of a sacrificed cat. 
And apologies to all the cat lovers listening to this video. But his weird drinking tendencies resulted in his demise. After Loveday drunk polluted water and subsequently died from illness, Loveday's wife, Betty May, leaked the insanity of the Abbey to the outside world, which drew the attention of none other than Benito Mussolini's fascist government. Realizing Alistair was even more fucked up than he was and kicked out Alistair and his cronies out of Sicily for good. Sadly, he did not send Goblin Slayer. But how is this weird and messed up story even linked to Index beside Alistair being the evil mastermind behind the events of the story? In the Index Light Novel, it is stated that Alistair used the Abbey of Philema as a template for Academy City and the Espers by using drugs to induce the paranormal in the minds of the students of the city. Since Academy City was founded and created by Alistair, the Espers can all be classed as his students, and in order to develop Esper powers in the first place, they must be subjected to drugs and experimentation to develop what is known as a personal reality in their minds, which then manifests their power in the real world. If you would like a further explanation on Esper powers, check out this video on screen. Therefore, it is the same as what Alistair was trying to achieve at the Abbey of Philema, as Alistair views Academy City as a recreation of it, which is the city's hidden and dark true nature. Therefore, despite Academy City being the center of the science side and appearing to be the antithesis of the occult and magic, it is, in fact, a reproduction of a magic side concept. I believe Kamachi took the concept of the Abbey from his time researching the occult to then use it to interlink science and magic in his story, as Alistair was introduced as early as the second volume of Index after all. Also, remember the concept of true will from earlier? Well, it is also teased that an Esper Power's personal reality is, in fact, one and the same as their true will, but they are able to weaponize it as their own power. An evil fairy which possessed a violin. That sounds weird, I know, but they said this. I am not some bizarre Academy City technology, nor am I one of your garbage Esper powers that simply rewrite the concepts of Flamer using arbitrary new terminology like personal reality. No one can decide their own personal reality, as you are either blessed with a strong ability or are left with absolutely no power in the worst case scenario. Cause it seems kind of weird to say that Accelerator's purpose in life is to push everything away from him, or in Sogita's case, to become a discount superhero preaching the message of guts. Actually, the latter makes sense, but from my perspective, since the true will represents the greater purpose of the person, it is not something you actually get to decide, as it is something that reveals itself to you along the journey of life. As Thelemites are expected to discover their true will for themselves, rather than making it up on the spot. Via the use of Academy City's experiments, an Esper's personal reality level and ability are revealed to them. Some overjoyed with the results, those thinking they might be able to develop further at a later stage, and others wishing they were never alive to begin with. The true nature of the Abbey of Philema was to reveal the true will of Alistair's followers through drugs combined with his disturbing teaching methods. And once that was decided, they had to live accordingly to fulfill their greater purpose. Just like how the espers of Academy City do so by using their powers for their own end goals. By the way, this video was not meant to be a comprehensive autobiography of Alistair's life, as there have been plenty of videos already that do that way better than I ever could. Also, subscribe if you would like to see more videos about different series covering their real life inspirations and their true stories, as I'd like to do this with other series in the future if you would like to see more of this style of video. Let me know in the comments what series you would like me to cover and subscribe again if you want to see more. Comment below and like the video if you enjoyed and don't forget to check out these videos on screen right now if you want to see more of the world of Index.